I'm Natalie Handel. I'm from New York City. I would say the question that's most commonly asked is about my internationalism, my cosmopolitanism, and how that affects my notion of home and how that affects my work. And also how I bring all these different languages together on the page. And my answer usually is it means I have more than one home. My parents' house is a home. My ancestral town of Bethlehem is a home. The cities I choose to exist in, New York City, Paris, uh, are home. And of course, I have to recharge in the Mediterranean. Uh, that's another home. And uh, as for the languages, I grew up speaking various languages. And all these languages s come to the page uh, harmoniously. Uh, the mornings anywhere in the world. But I would also say that my being at home in my apartment with my books and my paintings and my pictures, that's probably my, my most, that's probably the quietest and most productive place I work in. I am, I need the silence, but I'm not someone that needs complete isolation. Like, I don't like, I wouldn't want to be in the woods or in some des deserted island. That sort of isolation disturbs me. I'm very much a city person, but I like being in my apartment and I could stay here for weeks um, knowing that the city is downstairs. And then I travel and that's my life. I live in that contradiction. Uh, being away and being in the silence. That's the contradiction that, that I live in. Of course, that changes constantly. But I would have to say uh, Lor the ghosts of Lorca and Darwish and Ginsburg have been with me for, for a few years now. I've been having a constant conversation with Lorca for the past uh, couple of years. I just, I've been working on a book uh, called Poet in Andalusia, which is recreating Lorca's journey uh, in New York, but in Andalusia. So he's been with me a lot. And since Mahmoud Darwish's death in 2008, uh, he's been around a lot in my mind and around me. And of course, he brought um, Ginsburg back to me. And I've been having a conversation with the two of them. Uh, the very first interview the very first you know, writing job I've ever ha I had was uh, Mahmoud Darwish. He asked me to interview someone, and of course, none other than Allen Ginsberg, you know, very easy first interview. So, uh, and I never really thought about that, that time because Allen Ginsberg passed away a month after the interview. So that was quite, um, that was quite traumatic. And I had to process, and of course it took like 10 years and I'm visiting that, that encounter between um, the three of us right now. I'm constantly writing in my mind. So even if I don't have a piece of paper in front of me, I'm, you know, sort of collecting images and words. I'm a big collector of words. But I, of course, I often do have that notebook where I'm jotting down fragments and lines and just memories and but my favorite place to write and my writing process is in the morning I'm a very uh, I'm a morning person I love to wake up very early in the morning uh, five six in the morning and just sit before the world wakes up before the sun is you know loud and just write so that's usually my most productive writing time I don't know if there is a spiritual dimension. I would say that that, f that initial breath on the page, that moment when a poem manifests itself so raw and naked, is, it feels like a miracle. It feels like you're having a conversation with something bigger than you, which I experience as uh, something divine. But I, probably people would, people would say the same thing with, with whatever it is they're connected to in the world.